Hello, my dear friends. I'm Aaron Crane. And I'm Zantel Pitts. Today we talk about Uber's self-driving cars, a Mario maze, and naked Donald Trump statues. Brace yourself for all that and more here on The Input. Let's get right into what is trending online. Uber's self-driving cars are just as scared of bridges as we are. Pittsburgh is home to 446 bridges. The locals frequently brag that the city's bridge count was second only to Venice's. A drive around Pittsburgh typically includes crossing at least two bridges and possibly going through a tunnel. So the fact that an autonomous car can't quite figure out what a bridge is or why it's driving on one is a huge problem for the company, but also a huge opportunity. There are so many other geographical challenges in Pittsburgh besides bridges, though. It's hilly, for one, so hilly that you always have to leave space before the car in front of you at stoplights, just in case they roll backward. Will self-driving cars know to do that? It's also a maze of one-way streets and narrow roads, sending drivers in circles or the opposite direction from their destination. Along the Monongahela River, several busy highways line the embankment, nearly layered on top of each other. And there's the Pittsburgh Left, a maneuver so common in Pittsburgh culture that it's just easier to go along with it than it is to turn properly. A Pittsburgh Left is when a driver waiting to turn left at a stoplight guns it right when the light turns green trying to beat oncoming traffic. It goes against any rational thought, but it's the Pittsburgh way. Will the engineers teach self-driving cars not to T-bone drivers making the Pittsburgh Left? Plus there's the weather. Snow, ice, wind, rain, Pittsburgh has it all. All of this is to say that southwestern Pennsylvania is one of the most challenging places to drive in the nation. If Uber can master the terrain, the infrastructure, and the erratic drivers, it can handle anything, anywhere. Man, I know that's right. That whole yeah. Pittsburgh left thing, man, I think we mm -hmm. got a Columbus left, too. We should start one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we don't, I don't want to promote it, though. We got bad enough drivers already. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Facebook is testing a new version of their trending module, AKA that thing that fills your news feed. It removes blurps written by the staff of its social network site. Some people received the update earlier this month, but other state they haven't noticed the change. They've noticed the change a couple of days ago. In the new version of the module, topics are sorted and numbered, indicating the number of people talking about them. Before, each of those lines had short descriptions written by Facebook employees without any numbers showing the popularity of each topic. This method has raked over the coals in May when Gizmodo disclosed that human whims influenced the feature, as well as possibly making it, a, making it biased against particular viewpoints. Facebook previously told the press that trending topics were created using algorithms. This also comes with accusations that the staffers of Facebook could inject topics that weren't really trending in the feed. Facebook also denied those claims. It's unclear whether or not the new version of Facebook's trending topic module will launch to a wide audience. Social sites test things often that aren't guaranteed to, uh, guaranteed to release. The company took steps last month to distance itself from the media, so that new format makes sense for the new Facebook, altering its newsfeed to show more family and friend posts rather than links from brands. Okay, enough about that, let's move into some real news. When, Oz, when Otzi the Iceman was discovered in 1991, his 5,300 year old body had been remarkably well preserved by his glacial tomb. And while they weren't exactly runway ready, his clothes held up pretty nicely as well. The garments were clearly made of animal skins and furs, but scientists had no way of knowing what species the scrappy ensemble had came from. DNA sequencing has come a long way since then, and now we've finally gotten a peek into Copper Age wardrobe choices. According to a recent study, Otzi was wearing at least five different animals when he met his maker. For now, the team has analyzed the DNA in his leggings as goat, loincloth, sheep, shoelace, cow leather, hat, brown bear, coat, sheep and goat, and quiver, roe deer. That's quite the mixed bag. In fact, Otzi's coat alone contained the hides of four different individual animals, suggesting that individuals might have patched up their clothing with random pelts as needed. But the researchers don't think the Iceman got dressed in the dark. For example, cow leather, which was found in Otzi's shoes, was the sturdiest material on his body, suggesting his boots were made for walking. Sheep leather, which made up <laughs> parts of his striped coat, would have kept him warmer than other materials, and his leggings were made of the same material as other Copper Age legwear found nearby, suggesting that goat skin was chosen for a reason. The analysis provides a wealth of information about 
how Atsi's people lived. After all, fashion choices were far from frivolous at the time. The species found on Atsi's body contribute to our knowledge of what animals his people domesticated or hunted, but it's also possible that Atsi got some of his leathers or even finished pieces of clothing by trading with folks from other regions. Unless we find some other astonishing well-preserved ice men sitting around the Alps and cross-check their wardrobe choices, well, we may never know. Well, I do know Kanye West was one of those people he traded with. <laughs> Probably. Oh yeah, that clothing yeah. line sounds yeah. uh, kind of similar to his. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> From playing Mario Brothers to being inside their world and all of your favorite characters. Way out in Newark Valley, New York, the Stalton fam has created a maze shaped like all of the well-loved characters you love know, uh, that you know from the hit game Mario Brothers, which include Luigi, Toadstool, Yoshi, Peach, and of course the big man himself, Mario. For the past 11 years, Tim and Dev Stalton have been creating nerd mazes such as this one. Others have been Sleepy Hollow, Anti-Bullying Awareness, and Renewable Energy. The maze is open for a small fee, so that is eight acres of fun-filled nerd maze to enjoy. Hmm. Sounds right. fun. It definitely sounds I fun. love corn mazes. Yeah, and I love, hey, I love Mario, big fan, so I would definitely come out and enjoy that. Mm -hmm. All right, close your eyes. Oh, mm -hmm. All right, imagine you're walking through the park when in the distance you see a statue of sorts. Okay. It has blonde hair, Ooh. has some uh, flesh, flesh-colored skin, mm -hmm. uh, and as you get closer, you realize the horror that lies before you. A giant naked statue of Donald Trump. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's right, folks. That's it is real and be warned. Mm -hmm. You will never unsee what you're about to see. In a project called The Emperor Had No Balls, in decline, an anarchist group hired Las Vegas-based artist named Ginger to create what they call a monstrosis version of the presidential candidate. Ginger claimed that he was approached by the group specifically because of his monster-making abilities. The pieces appeared in New York, San Fran, LA, Cleveland, and Seattle. Now the images we are showing will be censored, but just know that these statues leave nothing to the imagination. When asked about the statues, Indecline said, quote, Like it or not, Trump is a larger-than-life figure in world culture at the moment. Looking back in history, that's how those figures were memorialized and idolized in their time, with statues. Well, now to take a break while I try to wash that thought out of my head, we'll be right back after this. Yeah. <laughs> if you're an Ohio Center for Broadcasting graduate, have a media-related degree, or have three years in a media-related field experience, then you're qualified for the Ohio Media School Sports Broadcasting Emphasis Program. The Ohio Media School, formerly the Ohio Center for Broadcasting, is offering qualified program candidates access to our sports broadcasting program to study advanced production, play-by-play, -play, interviewing skills, studio and remote coverage of sporting events. Call the Ohio Media School for your career in sports broadcasting. Call today. Classes are filling up. 614-655-5250. Okay, let's get into some weird news. 55-year-old New Jersey native Leroy Black has passed away. That in of itself is not an extraordinary story. However, the explanation behind his two separate obituaries are. The press of Atlantic City ran two similar but not same obituaries for the former fiberglass technician. One makes note that Leroy left behind a loving wife and son after dying at home on August the 2nd but the other makes no notes of a loving wife. It does, however, mention that Leroy died at home on August the 2nd and will be missed by his loving girlfriend. Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's right. Leroy Black got two separate obituaries, one from his wife and one from his girlfriend. They both ran on the same day in the same newspaper, one right above the other. Neither wife or girlfriend commented on the double O bit, but that has got to be wild, man. Yeah, I, mean, I, that, I don't think you'd want to comment on that. Yeah, and I mean, given the circumstances, it's better to yeah. remain silent about that. Mm. Have you ever wondered what that extra pocket in your jeans is for? Always. Yeah, Make that, use of you know, it. That, that little one inside <laughs> the regular pocket? Well, <laughs> according to LeviStrauss.com, it's a watch pocket for the cowboys in the Wild West who needed a quick and easy access to their pocket watch. But not many of us have a pocket watch anymore or our cowboys. <laughs> That's okay though, because Levi Strauss also said the pocket is useful for holding tiny trinkets and is loved by denim heads for the faded and worn nature it takes over time. So then, what can you put in that pocket, you ask? 
Well, you can put your movie tickets in there, maybe some coins, a guitar pick, a condom, a bottle cap. You can put in your USB or thumb drive, some loose floss, iPad mini, iPod shuffle, one AAA battery, three Skittles, a die, or even a mini disc. <laughs> No, that's right. And that's not all together. Those are all separate. I was hoping because yeah. you can only get a finger in there yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the show, folks. I'm Aaron Crane. And I'm Zantel Pitts. And we'll see you next time. Bye.